Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video, I'm going to show you the beauty of the plants in my front garden. In the northwest of England, it's the second week of December. We haven't had the first frost yet. The garden looks pretty when the sun is out at the moment it's about 5 degrees at night and 7 or 8 during the day. That's 40 Fahrenheit to 45 Fahrenheit. This is the long border which faces west. There are a number of mature shrubs along this border and one of my favourites is the hydrangea. This is a hydrangea macrophylla. It's a mop head, sometimes called a French hydrangea. European hydrangea or large leafed hydrangea. The large blooms are reminiscent of kitchen mops, hence mop head. As you can see there are some late blooms that are still totally white. In England we can generally grow these macrophylla hydrangeas in full sun. If you're in a hotter climate, it might be a good idea to plant them so that they only have the morning sun and can avoid the harsh afternoon sun. There are some varieties which will be happy in zones 4 and 5, but many of these macrophylla are only reliable from zone 6. In general, these hydrangeas love temperatures between 5 centigrade and 28 centigrade. That's 40 to 80 Fahrenheit. By a lucky coincidence, my garden rarely falls below 5 and is rarely above 28 centigrade. These hydrangeas do require a lot of water and you will see the leaves drooping when they are getting dry. This is a mock orange, it's an old Philadelphus that has bloomed really well in the past and this summer I decided to prune it back as I haven't done any maintenance pruning on it for many years. I decided to prune it back severely to rejuvenate it and we'll see what happens this coming summer. What I should have done is taken out a third of the oldest stems every year. I didn't do that with this plant and because of that I may forego flowers for a complete year. Here are the lovely stems in the sunshine of my small lilac. In front of the lilac are the azaleas and rhododendrons. Always remember to make sure the azaleas, magnolias, camellias and rhododendrons all have plenty of water in August and September as that's when they set their buds for the following year. The Pittisporum looks really nice, healthy and bushy with a gorgeous green even this late in the year. And next to the Pittisporum is my second set of sedum. I will leave these sedum as they are right through the winter and then in the early spring when the new growth is just starting to show I will simply cut off the dead stems.
The leaves have gone yellow and the catkins are starting to develop on the twisted hazel. It doesn't take much maintenance. All you have to do is cut it back when it gets too big and make sure that you take off any suckers that grow from the base. One of my lovely subscribers, Helen, told me that a common name for this plant is Harry Lauder's Walking Stick. I just love those descriptive common names. It grows between two and four meters high and the same in width and is happy in most soils and most aspects, sun or partial shade. And it is hardy in all of Northern Europe, all of Great Britain, and it equates to about USDA zone six. My lovely Magnolia stellata. It's a deciduous shrub growing to just three or four meters. What I love about this plant is it's so reliable in its flowering. Every year in March and April, it flowers its head off with pure white star shaped flowers. And here is a lovely view of the lichen growing on the plant. It prefers a sheltered spot in sun or partial shade and is hardy to zone four or five. It's an ideal magnolia for a small garden. About 12 years ago, I planted this Amelanchia tree in the middle of the lawn. It's such a pretty tree, makes for a nice focal point. It's ideal for a small garden growing to just four meters high, three meters wide after about 20 years. It is known for its beautiful flowers in spring, then pretty green leaves in summer, and of course, lovely autumn color. And it's hardy to zone four. And this is my eucalyptus gunny eye. It's the one that I pruned right back to see if any new growth would start as it had grown too tall. And of course it did. You can prune these trees each year very hard if you want to maintain a small bush and encourage the new leaves, which are quite attractive. In fact, you can grow it as a very small shrub by pruning back to the last three buds from the base every spring. Let's now move over to the pathway and steps leading from the parking area up to the front door. On the right, there's the Ceanothus. It's evergreen, nice and thick, lovely green right the way through the year. And the blue flowers in early summer that the bees love. Just passing the potentilla, just brown twigs left to take it through the winter. And behind the potentilla is my hot pink lace cap hydrangea. Being a macrophylla hydrangea, it has all the requirements and attributes of the mop head. So if you want to attract the bees, then it's the lace cap that you'd want rather than the mop head. I've noticed that the bumblebees really like lace cap hydrangeas. The flowering season is quite long. And in fact, we can see here one of the last flowers to develop on this plant is still looking good. On the other side of the path is the lavender hedge. I was going to cut some of the lavender way back into the old wood. And this is one of those plants. I'm very pleased that it's growing well and it'll be interesting to see how large it gets and how well it does next summer. At the top of the path, there is a second lace cap hydrangea. It's a slightly different one and is called Zorro due to the new fresh stems being a dark color. Any soil type is suitable, but if it's on the acidic side, it will be blue and on the alkaline side, it'll tend to be pink or red. The Zorro variety is a vigorous, upright, deciduous shrub with deep purple black stems. And as we can see here, it has already developed its buds for next year. The hardy fuchsia on the other side of the path has flowered beautifully all summer, all autumn, and is still flowering into the early winter. At the top of the garden, just in front of the house, there's a cypress tree and some more sedum. The butterflies really love the sedum in autumn. Here is a self-seeded foxglove tucked away just next to the choice ear. Nature often seeds plants in the perfect place. 
and I'm going to leave it there and watch it flower next summer. Here is the laurel that I cloud pruned earlier on in the year, still looking good. It'll be interesting to see what kind of winter we all have. I'm hoping for a mild winter. A little bit of snow would be nice, but not too much. I hope you've enjoyed the gentle tour around my garden today in early December. If you have, please give the video a like and I'll see you next time in Paul T's World. Bye.